good day everyone can we start the orientation all right uh, can i know how many of you know about this particular subject already who are attending okay all right okay fine um, how many of you so the rest of you are completely uh, new to this particular subject all right okay so have you had any exposure to the uh, examination previously has anyone already given prelims previously in this group yes those who have given can you please raise your hands okay the rest are all fresh to the preparation all right okay fine so can we start all right i am rajita and i am here to handle your optional classes we'll be having an orientation regarding your subject and uh, then we will take up some a uh, few question and answers i'll clarify all the doubts that you have all right so this will be the uh, rough plan around uh, 30 minutes first wherein i'll tell you about the subject etc and then we will go to the doubts all right i hope it is clear so once i have done with the session then uh, we'll uh, take up the questions of both the offline as well as the online students all right okay fine okay so if you look into the upsc sociology paper uh, you are aware that it is 500 marks that comes from this particular paper any optional subject is for 500 marks and this 500 is divided into paper 1 and paper 2 each paper for 250 marks and here in sociology what we have is paper 1 deals more with the world level content and paper 2 it deals with the india level content okay so we call it as world sociology and we call this specifically as indian sociology all right so out of this paper one whatever we have we have close to 10 units or 10 parts are there in the syllabus and usually we are having like minimum 20 to 30 marks covered from every particular unit okay so as we go further into the subject we can discuss regarding weightage and all that i'll tell you roughly what is there in this particular subject okay so first of all uh what happens is for majority of us up to 10 standard social sciences is there after that based on the electives that we take in 11th standard and 12th standard what happens is some of us might not be choosing social sciences and there will be students who choose sciences as such right so the orientation towards the subject is totally getting cut off after the 10th standard so this subject it totally talks about the happenings that we have around us what is there around us what are all the things that impact us if we study about those things all right so if you look into the syllabus the syllabus starts with just basics okay even if i do not have any idea about this particular subject it starts from the scratch and it takes us to the degree level any optional subject they test us based on degree level of that particular subject and here syllabus itself is designed in such a way that even if i do not have a background i can still pick it up if i already have a background i can just use that background to my advantage all right so if you look into what we have in paper 1 the first unit it talks to us about how this subject came so when did it come right so way back in around 1839 1840 is when the subject got created how did the subject get created what are all the major things which are a part of the factors which had contributed to making this particular subject this is what we have in the first unit in paper 1 the next one that we have is there is often this question is a subject a science a social science or is it an art what kind of a subject it is for example when a person does a sociology in an undergraduation level it is a ba sociology and it is an ma sociology so it is like bachelor of arts but it is a science subject that i take so obviously what happens there is always this confusion is it an art subject or is it a science subject if it is a science subject what kind of a science is it is it like similar to physics chemistry or is it something very peculiar that we have so later people wanted the believability of the subject to come in and so it was decided that sociology should be retained as a social science so the second unit talks to you about what all are the characteristics of science how will people believe something which is a science because anything in science no for example if you take the case of physics we conduct experiments and based on the calculations that we do we kind of prove whether what assumptions we have made is correct or not 
similarly i have certain kind of theories which people keep talking about is it true or not like that we kind of go further okay so this is to establish that sociology is a science okay the third subject is imagine that i am a person i have to start studying about this particular subject or i am going to do further research in this particular subject how we all will i do the research for example imagine that um we are a person who is going to sell a particular product imagine that i am going to uh, sell a shampoo bottle okay so what will i do i'll first check whether already people are using a similar kind of a shampoo what kind of market is there for that shampoo like that i'll be conducting something called as a survey to find out what are all the products which are already there and then i'll want to make my product in some way unique so that people are going to buy my product like that here also we will be conducting certain researches and this research is to find out whether we can prove what we tell okay so that all is a part of like we said survey okay imagine when we take a swiggy delivery after the delivery is completed we give a rating to that particular delivery agent regarding various parameters so one question is asked some stars are given and we mark the number of stars what do we do that that's a survey like that in this subject what kind of techniques are we using that is what is part of the third unit okay the fourth unit we said that the subject got created around say uh, 170 years back so in that particular time who are all the people who made this subject who all have contributed to this particular subject who all have created the syllabus for this particular subject that are all the important thinkers okay so what they have contributed how this is included as a part of the syllabus all that is a part okay so this weight this unit unit 4 it has a lot of weightage okay normally 50 marks we get from this particular unit that means we get two big questions and one small question out of this particular area okay when i say big question in sociology we say it as 20 mark question when i say small question i say it as a 10 mark question for a 20 mark question we get three pages to write okay so three pages means one side of the paper is called as a page okay so when i get three pages to write it is like recent trend 2023 mains 2024 mains they have made it as three pages for all the 20 markers both in paper 1 as well as in paper 2 okay and 10 marker means they will give me two pages one page front page one page back page okay like that i'll be getting a so we get two pages and here we get three pages all right so next so the theory part is completed up to the fourth unit the fifth unit onwards is very practical what happens around us okay so first time for example we are having a unit 5 called as stratification and mobility okay so let's take an example there will be some of you who are uh, competing in say obc non creamy layer some of you might compete in sc some of you might compete in st some of you might compete in ews right some of you might have any special category by which you will be competing so if i take this if you look into it we are getting something called as a community certificate we get something called as an obc certificate we get something called as a differently abled certificate like that any certificate that we are getting no that is based on some factors some criteria so i arrange people in the society based on various criteria say for example one criteria that we are taking is based on annual income so what we have done more than 8 lakhs annual income is there for the parents means the students are coming under creamy layer right so there is one classification like that we are having okay of course it varies according to governmental services private services etc so if i take i am saying creamy on what layer am i telling creamy based on annual income how do i use this word class i will ask a person are you middle class are you lower class are you upper class so i can arrange people based on class okay based on this only we have done income tax layers 10% 20% 30% like that so uh, if a person is paying something like about 20% income tax we say that this person is 
very comparatively you can tell upper middle class only you can't tell them as poor people and all that right poor people means they are having very less income isn't it so we use a word called below poverty line and all that so we study about poverty we study about class we study about a word called status so people are ah, why do you want civil services civil services give you a job wherein you have an identity wherein you get a particular status in the society so you can get status from your job so what are all the things that give you a status you can get status from where you come from you come from which part of india which part of the world so certain things are because of your birth certain things are because of what you do so how do i get a status so status comes under this then they'll tell a word race ethnicity like this various classifications we have on the basis of which we identify people okay so all that is a part of stratification and then there is a word mobility that means is it possible for a middle class person to become rich it is for for example i start up a company and initial level i get a bank loan or something and then my company clicks like anything and within a year or two i become a very super rich person it's possible anyone can move from any status to any status it's possible when it comes to income so certain things give you mobility mobility means i can shift from one layer to another layer it is possible okay so that's all as a part of the fifth unit okay next is the beauty beautiful aspect of sociology sociology has a little bit of every gs subject okay so the sixth unit is what from economics has come to sociology seventh unit is what from polity political science has come to sociology eighth unit is what from philosophy has come to sociology ninth unit is what from anthropology has come to sociology and tenth unit is what is current affairs which has come to sociology that's it so when whatever i do here is something which i learn practically in all the current affairs in all the other subjects also which i am having so it's something like a very nice fusion of all those other subjects that i have here all right so each of these units they have a particular amount of weightage weightage means how many questions are asked or how much marks will they be giving me out of this uh, giving me as questions okay so out of the 10 units if you see in the recent past like last year uh, that is uh, sorry 2024 mains the combined questions which come from 6th 7th 8th 9th and 10th unit this is kind of becoming important these days static questions are one part these are the application questions so we are having an importance coming to these particular regions okay we'll move on to paper 2 so paper 2 again is divided into three basic units a unit b unit and c unit a and b is static static means whatever you read now one or two years later also you are going to get the same thing you are going to write the same answer c portion has a little bit of connection to what is happening around you that means i have a question on uh, do you think that women movements have happened in india like that they are asking a question so till now we've had only one me too movement that has happened and that also it is not a very major movement and all it has happened based on social media that's how the me too movement happened before that all the women movements if you see it's like combined with some other movement so till now we have only one but we don't know by the time we write the main examination whether any other movement will come or not so i have a particular portion which is having a little bit of a grounding or foundation in static part and i can include what is happening around me also as a part of what i discuss okay say let's go to what are all the part here first is the static part like we studied thinkers or the fourth unit in paper 1 similarly in indian sociology who are all the thinkers that is all a part of this portion okay so there we had six thinkers here we are having only three thinkers who are a part who are the most important people who laid the foundation for indian sociology okay right the next portion is from history what has come into sociology so colonial movement social religious reform movements all these things we study as a part of history so from that what has come is included as a part of the syllabus here okay fine then if you are going to take in 
you can just see what are all the other portions that we have in B. If you take the first one, it's agriculture. From agriculture, what has come and included as a part of sociology, that's a part here. Caste system, you are very well aware of this particular topic. So this is a very important unit. Normally, we get 50 marks from here. Okay, fine. So how they ask us regarding caste is, say, uh, sometimes it's some theory. Sometimes it's like, do you think caste and politics are interconnected? What is your opinion? Comment on that. Like that we are getting questions. Okay. Tribes. So there we studied that anthropology from anthropology what has come here. Here we study only about Indian tribes. We don't study names, this tribe is in this part and all that. We broadly study about tribal policies. We study about um, what are the problems that are there in tribal regions. What will, we, what will we do in administration like that. That aspect is what is there here. Okay. And the rest of whatever we have. Like we had economics in paper 1, same thing we are having in paper 2. So we study about in India what are all the classes. In India what is the type of family we have, what is the type of marriage we have. If you take this year's GS1, Gender Studies 1, there was a question. If I compare inter-caste marriages and inter-religious marriages, we can see that inter-religious marriages are having a lot more challenges when compared to inter-caste marriages. Six, seven years back in UPSC when there was a question, inter-caste marriage itself was a very rare thing. Now inter-caste marriage is getting more accepted, but inter-religious marriages are still having less acceptance. So the question has come based on what is happening around us. Last year there was a question, that is, do you think marriage is losing its sacred status? Is it losing its value? Like that, because we can see that on one end people keep talking about large number of divorces which are happening. And uh, we can see changes in how people are in marriage itself. How do they interact with each other in marital institutions and all that. All right. So that's all a part of in paper one, whatever we had, similar thing we have in paper two. Okay. And here some unique aspects are there. For example, we have something called as Inheritance Act. Okay. Succession Act. We created that act in 1956. So in India, we did not have equality in terms of property transfer before based on whether you are a man or a woman based on that property got transferred only to the men okay now you can see post independence property is getting equally transferred okay similarly age uh, is also a very important factor for example eldest male used to get the largest property and youngest male used to get the least property like that we had a system now you are the first you are the second Nothing matters. Everybody gets equal share. Fine. Similarly, we've also made changes. For example, if someone is adopting a child, then for that case of adoption, what will be the property assurance that is given to that kind of a child? So earned property and how it is getting transferred, ancestral property, how it's getting transferred. These things uniquely in Indian sociology we are having. Inheritance aspect, we study that specially. Okay. Religion in society, very simple question. We recently had... Um, the sad demise of uh, Mr. Ratan Tata. So we understand that he is from a Parsi community. So there are questions like what is the contribution of different religious communities to India? So what are the contributions of Parsis? What are the contributions of Jains? Like that religious minorities especially, we usually get some questions based on that. And we also have questions regarding to uh, what are the problems that are there? Is there any fight? Is there any conflict that happens on the basis of religion? All that is a part of this unit. Okay. The next part that we are having is completely related to change. What is, what was India is part of A and B. What is India, which direction is it going is a part of C. Okay. So how is constitution impacting change in India? How are laws impacting change in India? How are planning, that is the first we had five year plans. Now we are having 15 year planning. So how is it impacting India? All that is a part. Then Indian industries. Okay, so we divide it into rural areas and urban areas. Rural areas, what are the development programs? Urban area, what are the development programs? Why are slums there? Then how do you improve the facilities in both rural and urban areas? What kind of programs do you have? How does it impact the lives of the people? All that is a part of C2 and C3. And like we had political science and its impact, here also we are having in Indian sociology, we study what are all the political movements, what, are all, what is the importance of democracy, 
what is the importance of media, all that is a part of this. And you remember I was talking to you a question on uh, women movements in India. Okay, very often we get questions on that. That's from this particular unit. Okay, so we have questions on environmental movements. We have questions on peasant movements. Peasant means very poor farmers. Okay, so what are the kind of movements that I heard? In history you would have studied something called as a Champaran, Keda, like that you would have heard about some movements, right? So how did it impact the people like that? Okay, so we have that as a part and this is very exclusive. For example, this is a portion where you have an overlap with geography. For example, we study about population, impact of various um, groups, their literacy rates, impact of um, maternal mortality rate, then child mortality rate, various ratios and all whatever we are having, what is the impact, then we study about uh, population planning and how it is impacting, how is going to be the future of India, all this is a part of this particular area. So the recent area of concern is aging in India. So how do we give elderly care, right? How do we ensure all that? That's all a part of this portion. And the last portion is, what are all the problems India wants to develop? and become a greater country, but there are some hurdles which are there. What are those hurdles? Like we have some issues with respect to caste problems, some problems with respect to religion, some problems with respect to displacement. Like we are all encountering disasters on a daily basis, especially monsoonal seasons are becoming like a nightmare all over the world. And especially in the Indian Ocean region, we are facing a lot of impact, right? So what is the impact of disasters and displacement? How does it impact the community? All that is a part of the challenges to social transformation. So in all, this is what we have, okay? But if you see, the biggest advantage that you have is, every paper, it has only four units, which is exclusive. That means, which we have to study separately. Rest, everything is interconnected between paper one and paper two. That means, if I take a topic democracy, it's a part of politics, so, when I study politics and society, okay, what is the concept? What is it in world level? What is it in India level? Parallelly, the syllabus will get completed. The words are similarly placed both in paper 1 and paper 2. So, what happens is, it's in a very short span, we can complete the syllabus. We can have a detailed oriented idea about that particular topic. Examples alone, we have to change, but the concept is not going to differ. So, close to 60% of the syllabus is interconnected. That means one time you read, one time you invest the time, you can take it both in paper one and in paper two. That's the easiest part of this particular subject, okay? So now let's go to the pros and cons. Right? So first, the advantages that we are having, okay? One is, Subject itself, the syllabus itself is designed from the basics. So even if I have no idea, I can build this idea and it can all be done within a short span of time. So to take up a complete amount of preparation, I think five months of time if we have, we can easily do it. Okay, that means five months, with say close to uh, three to four hours of time, we can easily do complete round of reading of that particular syllabus. That's the easiest part. High clearance rate. So if you look into the UPSC's annual report also, you can see the clearance rate from mains to final list. So sociology consistently, we can see that more than the range is between 12% to 19% of students who are going to the interview. So that means it's a very high clearance rate because normally anything is about 10% itself, we will consider it to be good. This is consistently about 12 percentage and we've had as much as 19 percentage of people clearing from this particular subject from who are writing the main examination. Okay, so that is very high clearance rate. Okay, next is as I already told you the interconnection is there between the syllabus limited and the important part is I don't need to mug and vomit. Okay, I can learn, I can write on my own. I don't need to reproduce any textbook. But if I'm comfortable with writing a definition exactly like how it is also, it's fine. So if I am a person who can be on my own, I can do that. If I need some help and I need to write, I can only have it if it is there in my textbook. That also is possible. Both kind of people can 
get very good score in sociology so it's giving a balance between however you want to present your answers for everyone there is a space okay next one ready reference material and of course the results that i have here and i'll be completing everything of the syllabus okay so we'll not leave any part untouched and the biggest challenge that we have here is we can't write half sentence full sentence we have to write that is needed for anything in upsc but in gs at least uh, we don't need to fully write sentences so even half of the sentence if you write it is okay but in optional subjects in every optional there is some need in sociology we need to write full sentences that means i can't say uh, caste system in india is uh, weakening simply just like that i can't write i say caste system in india is weakening because and i'll have to write a point for that so that is one complete sentence but again every subject needs some requirement and this is one requirement but level of english it can be simple basic ncert english okay you don't need to be very proficient and all that you are just able to write it is more than enough and of course awareness like in our own class we had many of us who did not have a previous idea about the subject before we came we get this idea only as we do that particular subject so generally in various regions of india especially if you take the southern region of india there is more of exposure to science there is very less of exposure to these kind of social sciences so that's one biggest disadvantage that we have okay right so now what do you get if you are going to choose sociology as your optional first in depth coverage of your syllabus next is you will be getting guidance in in terms of preparation stage in terms of writing stage and in terms of interview stage you will get everything covered because once you take up the classes the connection that you have with me it is always going to be there until you are making it into service okay the next one main answer writing practice we incorporate class tests also as a part of the classes so when we start the classes now we will be in a position to complete by march mid because may 25th is your exam for those students who are writing 2025 preliminary so i want to complete two months before the examination so we'll go as per schedule and we'll be completing everything by schedule so that you have adequate time okay and in this course you will be having class test etc so normally after we complete a particular unit we'll be doing the test for that so at least one basic you will be having an idea before you go to prelims so that you don't feel to need to feel scared once i clear prelims how am i going to complete in 3 months of time you don't need to have that worry you can you can do it if you are going as per a particular schedule okay this i have told you and then when we evaluate my team is also having people from uh who have a previous upsc interview background or who are into service who are helping their juniors like that okay so you have a very nice mentor team with you and who will be helping you with every step of paper evaluation etc and of course nothing is a group thing all the mentoring that is happening is a one to one mentoring so it is like personally sitting with you discussing about your answers and then helping out so both in the offline mode as well as in the online mode we do it in the same way only okay right now what is with sociology which is there in the other parts of the upsc preparation and other preparation first general studies paper 1 we can see that the weightage of society is increasing and uh, if you look on an average 6 to 7 questions are coming weightage this year it's like 85 to 90 100 marks it has actually come in terms of knowing about this particular topic itself essay writing normally we have two questions at least asked based on the sociology related topics so uh, on an average at least one topic is coming so both the sections at least one topic with your knowledge here you will be in a position to write and interview anyone from any background whatever be your optional definitely the question in the interviews about social issues only or social problems only they ask us problems about our district about the state that we come from generally about india about international affairs all these social problems we will be discussing in the class itself so separately we don't need to go with a lot of fear about the interview that's one another part and of course 
in various state services examination conducted you can see that this is also a part of the syllabus some places like say rajasthan karnataka and all that there is this sociology again the same syllabus it is getting repeated and if you are taking tamil nadu public service here you have in one general studies paper one entire portion is society so that is again getting covered based on what you are reading here okay and normally after a couple of years in case we have given multiple attempts we are already prepared for the main examination but sometimes prelims we are in the border and we are not in a position to clear the prelims and we have invested a lot of time then we start looking for options that parallel to whatever other higher studies or other work that i do i'll be channelizing my upsc attempts so in such a case what we notice is there are a lot of previous batch students who are doing post graduation courses based on social work based on policy research they have got into iits iims and uh, they have uh, done, gate also has sociology okay or last 3 years onwards gate has sociology so some students they choose that also and parallelly they are doing the preparation just in case prelims gets delayed for in terms of clearing for a few students no they want to have some backup so for that backup also this is actually very helpful because it builds your conceptual knowledge okay and we have also a couple of people who are working in various ngos so uh, the ngos which are working with migration workers which are working with uh, uh, health workers mental health issues right with all these things also we have previous students who are working so that that exposure that you get from the subject it helps you to connect with people and they are also able to shine in those kind of work as well okay so now what is the plan all right so we will be starting classes on november 7th and it will go on till march 2025 and classes will be on weekdays monday to friday and we are having two phases for the class the first phase is from november december sorry this should be four to january we will be having class 230 to 430 and phase two the last one month you know uh, that is february and march mid those 40 days i might need one extra hour because uh, in this particular mains there are certain areas where uh, the interconnected topics have been asked layered questions have been asked so to help you with those kind of questions i will need one extra whatever it is we will be completing uh, so we will have a 15 minute break after the first session and then we'll be having another 45 minutes of session so roughly this will be the plan and by march uh, maximum by march 25th i will be in a position to complete the syllabus for you okay and we will be giving you the hard copy of the materials three books will be given to you that will cover entire portion of whatever you are having everything is like um from various textbooks whatever compilation is needed for a student uh to cover within 4 to 5 months of time so that you know the basics of igno you know the basics of standard books whatever is needed all that will be incorporated as a part of your material itself okay and we will be having totally 10 tests to cover the entire syllabus five tests will be completed before you go for the preliminary and five tests will be there after your preliminary so roughly in between we'll have a two month break and then we'll once again resume okay all right and august uh, 22nd is your main examination so roughly by july we will be completing all the sectional tests and full test you will be starting in the month of august so you will be ready by then okay so this we often operate through a class telegram group through whatever communication etc we have we put it into that so once we are this once we complete a particular portion normally we will have 10 days to 14 days of time for you to prepare and when i am teaching the next unit you will be studying for the previous unit so that you can keep writing the test parallelly okay so this will be the plan okay so 127 students so far have got through from sociology optional who had studied under me so i have been taking classes from november 2013 regarding upsc so and in this 28 people are in uh, administrative service four in foreign service 18 in police service 29 in revenue service and 46 other students out of this 127 they are in various other group a and group b services as a part of the upsc okay 
right. So, these are the rankers that I've had. So, All India ranked 6 in 2020, All India ranked 12 in 2022, 15, 27, this year we had All India 27, then All India 37 in 2015, 40, 42, 45, so all the double digit numbers. So, to, so far, uh, we've had close to 16 students who have got in double digit ranks and one student who has got in the single digit rank uh, so far who have done classes, test series, etc. with us, okay? Right, so... If you go to Shankar IAS website, under this, if you just go to optional test series, you just go to that, just go to it. Under this, if you click sociology, all the details is there here only. This is not regarding the classes alone. It is there regarding the tests also. This is the, the who are all the previous toppers, what are their marks, and this is the list of the toppers who are there from 2014 to 2022. So I started in 2013. So from 2014, who are all the rankers? What are their names? What are their services? Everything is there in this itself. So if you have any queries, you can just check in that. This year, what are the, uh, who are the rankers? And those students who are not repeating the examination, their answer papers also have uploaded here. So you can have a look at it. Okay. Just for the sake of putting it somewhere, we have put it there. All right. So we are just working on the website as such. Right. So this is what we do. And apart from this, uh, when we do the classes, no? so there is an order in which we go ahead in the classes. And um, from the last two years toppers papers, we also give good answer copies. That is what a student can originally write in terms of say eight minutes or 12 minutes in the actual examination in based on the tests that they have written unit wise. We have compiled some questions which will be given to you after you complete each and every unit. So once we complete some unit in the class, that unit, what are all the PYQs? We, I'll give you the answer key for the PYQs for the last four years. No, five years we'll be having. And then uh, because the trend has changed in the last five years, so that PYQ answer key and also the good answer copies that will also be given to you. So that you have an idea, not just from the classes, but also based on the seniors what they have written, you will have it with you always. So that as and when you write mains, no, you can always have it as a ready reference. So this is roughly what we will be doing in the classes. All right. So now I'm open to the questions from your side. You can ask any question. So after today, the next session will be on November 7th only. Okay. So um, if you want, if you've decided on sociology and you want to do something on that, I would suggest you take up the 11 standard and 12 standard NCRT. Okay. Each of the standards have two textbooks. Okay, 11th standard textbook is for paper 1, 12th standard textbook is for paper 2. So you can simply start going through the areas, just go through the index page, whichever index is relevant to your syllabus. For example, introduction to sociology means in your syllabus also there will be introduction to sociology. You can just have a look at it so that you can just develop some familiarity. That's all is needed. Rest we can build it in the class. Okay, fine. So this is what we are having in terms of what you can do. Uh, till you come then obviously because of Diwali that is coming up some of you might be taking a break in terms of going home etc so in one or two other days that you are having you can actually go through if you if you wish okay um, the question that he has asked is apart from this do we need to purchase any other textbook uh, NCRT alone you please get because that is needed and apart from that the rest uh, is available to you as the material only. It will be given to you as the material 
and uh, any other reference whatever is needed i can give it to you as ebooks because the idea here is when we prepare for a competitive examination in a short period maximum how to score we don't have enough time to do like a phd level in that particular subject but at the same time we should be able to satisfy the expectations of the evaluator so how do we balance these both so in the limited period of time going through all these things will be very difficult for a student that is why you come to some class so you will get all the necessary help from the class okay any other doubts the question is what kind of value additions can we do for the answers in sociology the most important value addition is you can reuse the same current affairs whatever you are reading for gs itself for every point that we write we give an example um so the example is based on what we read in gs itself that we can put it here so there is no need to invest any additional time you can simply reuse it and in terms of making block diagrams or anything that we can do it here as well but uh, uh say for a paper which has like say 19 questions that we are going to write normally 3 to 4 questions we just put some kind of maps or diagrams and all that which is a part of anything that we do in upsc other than that value addition is in terms of examples that you pick it from current affairs yes so for example uh, once we the question is how is the test plan okay so we'll be having a unit in the class for example if i finish the first unit when i i'll tell i'll announce the date for the test okay and then I, i'll be teaching the second unit in the class your duty would be to prepare for the test in the class when you come you be mentally and physically present or virtually present that's all just make proper notes and prepare in the time table of the class because too many things in a limited time will be very confusing because you will have to prepare for your general studies and when you prepare for the optional it's better that you go in the test plan so studying if you do as per the test plan you will be able to complete to uh, 280 to 300 marks of the en uh, entire portions before you go for prelims the rest we can do it after prelims no 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 the remaining test will be continued after prelims so till march we will be having the first five tests then we'll have a two month break and then june we will be starting the sixth to tenth test so june that also you'll be getting a time table that time table will be like uh, because that time classes are over no so once in 10 days once in a week like that you'll be having the portion so that you can complete everything before july so the five tests that time correspond to five tests no 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 we will be combining two to three units and keeping it as a test because thinkers as such we have six thinkers we'll divide it into two tests like that so we'll be covering in five tests because in 10 tests we complete the entire syllabus i was talking to you right some portions are there paper 1 and paper 2 no so the linked portions will be combining as one test so when i do stratification here i'll be doing caste system in paper 2 so parallelly in the class also we'll be doing like that only so in the test also we'll go in that plan so in that way you'll be able to complete uh the point is okay uh the thing is uh classes we'll keep on weekdays uh i generally don't call students on weekends uh, if in case because of any uh disaster or something we need to always plan i'll always announce two weeks in prior so that you can plan your other work and we'll keep it in the time and if i keep a class also i'll keep keep it only saturday afternoon okay but i do not have it as a plan i can comfortably complete the portions within that stipulated time uh, so 99% i'll not call you on weekends at all worst. it's the worst case just to be doubly sure okay but nothing will be done no classes will be cancelled without prior notice we'll go as per a schedule in a worst case if i don't feel when i can't stand in the class and take only then i'll be cancelling the class which is very 
rare i don't i always keep in mind that when you travel and come from a long distance your time is equally important and i respect your time as well so i'll not uh, make all those sorts of hassles for you okay yes um uh, i think uh, that's a question which is conflict of interest isn't it because uh, i cannot answer for another subject so perhaps i'll talk to you separately after this particular discussion all right okay i'll tell you okay generally whenever you have a confusion uh, you can get as much confused before you choose a subject okay what should be the criteria that you're going to take is your comfort level in that particular subject the kind of guidance that you can get the peer group that you have and clearance at the end of the day we are not doing this for any ego massage we are here to clear the exam so be very objective about what you want out of this preparation and accordingly you will have to make your choices so this should be your consideration whenever you are making any choice this goes with any subject versus any subject okay this is the general criteria is that all with the offline students ncrt oh no there is a sociology ncrt just go to the ncrt website no there will be an there there's also this thing called e patshala when you go to that you go to 11th standard there will be a drop down and in that drop down you put sociology you will be getting further a drop down and you will be getting the books there itself you can download it as the e book itself page by page also you'll be getting entire chapter also you can download you can download it there it's a sociology book itself always go for latest when it comes to sociology always go for the latest uh, very recently they did the revision so you go for the latest yeah. okay comfortable all right i'll i'll give you my telegram id uh, my social media id you can reach me out in anywhere that's not an issue okay this is my telegram id and uh, i'm also available in the same id in all the other social media platforms and if you want to reach me you can also email me okay and if you have any other queries no if you just go to the link that you have got for the optional classes right you can just so if you just go here there is one common number that you have here right you can reach out to us on any of the numbers that are available okay so there will be one 766 one number will be there on the website you can just reach out to us they will connect right and alternatively
if this is the optional coordinators number you can reach out at any of these numbers they can they will definitely be able to help you okay so if you have any doubts uh, in case you are not able to reach if the phone is engaged or anything please put an sms or you put a telegram message they will definitely respond all right if there is anything you can feel free to reach out all right okay fine thank you i'll take up the online students queries now okay you leave this if you wish to stay you can stay that's your wish all right so i have a question from raj sundar he has asked this question as what are all the books we have to study okay so primarily you can rely on your class notes you can rely on the material that is provided to you and we will go through the ncert and as and when if you decide to take up sociology during the classes i'll be discussing it to you about what are all the other sources that we need to take the inputs from all right uh, because as of now it's very early to tell you but the standard books whatever we are using for paper 1 we follow a thinker called as sociology themes and perspectives by a thinker called as uh, harlem bose and uh, this and holborn that is the co-author we follow that particular uh, thinker and uh, for paper 2 we go by the ignu materials uh, ignu ba sociology materials we also go with uh, uh, bk nagla we go with uh, yogendra singh modernization of indian tradition Uh, these but in paper 2 what happens is in one book you don't have everything okay it's like multiply uh, placed in various books so these are the books that we follow but from all these things we compile and uh, i do it in the classes for you okay so there is this question that uh, you are engaged in class from 10 to 4 is there any other batch so i am running a batch currently which i am taking classes from 5 to 7:30 that's also on the weekdays and the other batch which i'm going to start is from 2:30 to 4:30 so uh, these are the two batches that you are having okay i joined late i need to get the recording of the session they will live this particular recording on youtube so you can watch it on youtube and if i write practice on my own will your team be kind enough to evaluate and provide the feedback okay so if you are enrolled with us for sociology classes uh, we will definitely help you with whatever subject input is needed any answer evaluation that is needed Uh, will you provide any material or pdf for sociology related to current affairs if not please con consider it so i do it from the uh, we incorporate it as a part of the class notes and then uh, we do the important pointers related to current affairs based on epw which is incorporated already as a part of your material which is printed and given to you okay because every subject has a particular nature in optional of sociology what is needed that will be provided to you So students who are uh, you have asked regarding the fee structure, you can please check in the Shankar Ayer's website regarding the fee structure. It is available to you, okay? Or you can alternatively check with one of the coordinators whose numbers I have given here. You can please check with them. Okay. Yes, you do have access to the uh, recorded classes. i previously studied in science group and now have a confusion okay i am also a, a person from science group i was working in core engineering background we i was into car chassis manufacturing and uh, it is from there uh, that i entered into tsunami relief work and from there only i had shifted to upsc preparation 
so i am a hardcore uh, technical person who had uh, wanted to explore another side and that's how i came in uh, to sociology and uh, so if it is uh, doable for me i think it is doable for many of us isn't it how to overcome the challenge of upload updating current affairs that can be time consuming actually this particular uh, uh, optional it doesn't require uh, current current that kind of uh, current affairs okay it's not like yesterday something came and today that comes in the question paper and all that current actually means 5 years old for us all right so and again in the in the trend of whatever is happening uh, say for example there is a change that is happening in the society uh, for example the demonetization it uh, it happened in 2016 but then the question came in 2019 okay so current is not that current as we talk in general studies okay so this is like based on the current trend we can expect some question for example we see a a case of a lot of old age homes then the question can be regarding old age so that's the uh, it's to predict a particular kind of nature that you have to that particular question that's all okay uh i think in the ppt itself i have told you regarding the correlation between general studies and uh, sociology what all is covered in which part of general studies so i think when you go through that uh, you will be able to get it get an idea about it all right and you've asked for the email id you've asked for the contact now everything is available on the board itself is batch 3 there or there are only two batches i do two batches in a year because uh, to complete a batch it will take 5 to 6 months and normally i do around 100 classes so that we are able to exhaustively cover everything in the class and you don't need any anything additional from your side so i think i have the energy only for that in a year yeah the 5 to 730 batch if you take up yes i have almost completed i have i have completed five units for them because they are going to complete the classes by january so yes so if you can little bit manage uh, the half an hour break time that you have i think that will be better because you can start fresh and that will be easier for you also and because it's two hours of class only no so you can easily complete it uh, as and when you we are having the class itself it will not be a big load how much do we have to study current affairs related to sociology as i already told you whatever in general studies are, that you are studying as social issues that itself is more than enough for sociology optional all right okay after prelims yeah i be usually i do a batch in the month of june july and another batch in the month of uh, november uh, october november like that okay so this is like dependent upon uh, last year because we had the elections uh, everything got postponed in terms of the exam cycle so we had to start a little bit late so usually this is the cycle so yes after prelims also i'll be having a batch thank you ashwarya okay i've already enrolled will i get the book i have already enrolled after the commencement of the course or you because i have not, still not uh, yeah usually within uh, the first one or two weeks itself you will be getting the access to all the books okay because everything is ready with us uh, for the offline students we ask them to collect it for the online students we send it by india post okay so normally given the uh, where it is so if it is like nearby states students do get it within 3 to 4 days otherwise it gets stretched up to 10 days okay so once the classes start they will they'll send a form onto the telegram group asking for all these students addresses etc and then based on that they'll be dispatching the materials to you
yes, you do have access to the recorded lectures. As a second year student of college, I enrolled GS this year. Should I start optionals also now? Okay, so are you in a three-year program, four-year program or a five-year program? What kind of a student are you? Because based on that, I can give you the input. If you are a second year student, so Janet, can you respond for what is the course that you have taken? A two year, two year program. Two year program means that means you're doing your masters. Okay. UG, you are doing in arts and science, or you're doing in engineering, are you doing medicine? What exactly is your UG? Okay, so you're already doing a UG in sociology. All right. Then I think uh, you right now you complete your uh, general studies class and then uh, because you already have a little bit of an idea, you can pick, you complete GS this year and then you take up the uh, optional next year because you're just now in college, na. you will be appearing only in 2026, right? So for that, I think you take up the uh, July batch. Is uh, sociology comparatively doable than other subjects? Okay, uh, I think uh, understanding the subject is pretty easy. So other subjects, it is always dependent upon your uh, strength, uh, whether you're comfortable or not. So I think it is pretty doable uh, given the time that we have and given the inputs that you have. So uh, that's my personal opinion though. Okay. So... Online students, do you have any other questions? I think I've handled all your questions. Okay. Offline students, do you have anything else to ask me? Yeah. Yes. Regarding the subject, see, for example, if it were any other subject, I don't even need to explain about the subject, right? Because you have it in school. Now here I'm in a position to tell about the subject, explain what is there in the syllabus, etc. That thing will not be there for certain subjects. So in every subject, optional subject that you take, some subjects are useful in prelims and mains. Some subjects are useful in mains and interview. Uh, so this is one such subject which will be very useful in mains and in interview. That means if you cross the first stage, then it's like something like it's very, very doable to get into the final list. So it's about what a student actually wants. Uh, some people have a habit of uh, comparing with prelims oriented subjects. The subject, I think hardly any question has come in prelims. So it is a question, it is a subject which is there more for mains and it is very important for covering many topics in mains as well as in uh, interview. So that's how the nature of the subject is. So awareness, what I was telling is awareness in terms of Knowing about the subject. No, no, the thing is, uh, we've had, uh, I think, uh, close to eight people who have scored 300 plus. Uh, and uh, 290 plus, uh, I think around six members have scored. And uh, 280 plus and all, many people have scored. So awareness regarding writing and uh, help and everything else is there. It's about... Uh, whether I should pick up this subject or not, that kind of an awareness is, uh, that's what I was talking about. I think, uh, so you are in class for two to three hours, isn't it? Up, down, coming, commuting, and then. So apart from that, I think uh, if you're able to give on an average uh, some, 12 hours a week apart from your classes because some students study only on the weekends because in weekdays they are in class. Some students they get apart from their classes uh, two to three hours a day. So in that you have to do your paper, your GS and your optional. So I'm giving you a weekly target. So weekly if you're able to put in, I think that much of time uh, will be needed to go one round uh, completely and keep yourself ready.
Yeah, that should be more than enough. Yeah, that makes sense because uh, you should always plan it with how much of time that you are having. So on an average, if you're able to put in, uh, say, a stipulated amount of time, uh, then based on when you have a off day from your work, based on that, you can actually pick it up. All right. Okay, guys, thank you. I'll see you on November 7th then.